Okay, so the next loop you're going to consider is the for loop. The for loop, similar to the while loop, is a pre condition loop, just like the just like the while loop, and as such, it's very similar to the while loop. Anything that you can accomplish using a for loop, you can actually do using a while loop. Um, the big difference between the two, uh, it, the, the big difference is that the for loop is a lot more structured than the while loop. And we're going to see uh, why that is. So that structure sometimes is helpful um, and, and it organizes your code quite a bit. So you prefer to use the for loop. Sometimes that structure of the for loop is limiting and you would be better off using a while loop. So the for loop, the while loop and the do while loop that I'm going to teach in a, in a little bit, um, they're all tools for you. You need to decide as a programmer which one to use when and where and when, when it is basically appropriate to use which of these uh, loops. Sometimes there is no difference, uh, but other times um, there is definitely um, a difference. So let's start with a, a, a while loop the way we had it. So we had int i to zero and we had while I it's gonna say less than three print I and then I plus plus. We know that the output here and I'm going to uh, basically write print I quotations out of the loop i is i'm going to print what i is um, out of the loop so this is the while loop let's do the equivalent the very equivalent for loop and i actually haven't shown you the notes but i just want to show you what it looks like so for loop actually takes the three steps that you do in a while loop and does it all in one structured line so you have number one initialization you have number two check or test condition right test condition And number three was update. So for loop does all these three in one line, and that's why it's a lot more structured and it's actually a lot more cleaner um, to write. So for loop, you say for, and then you have one rather long bracket. And inside the bracket, you have two semicolons like that. So you have, basically you have three spots to write. Spot number one, spot number two, and spot number three. So that's one, two, and three. And they map directly here. So one is initialization, two is um, test condition, and three is update. So if I wanted to write this very thing as a for loop, let me just delete these. Uh, I would basically write, let's write it using a different line. So I would have int i equals zero. And then I would have i less than three. And then here I would have number three i plus plus. And then I would, of course, have the body of my code, and I would have print ln i. 
Now, this code right over here, this while loop, is identical to this for loop. They will both have exact same results. They would, they would both print out to the screen 0, 1, and 2. Now, let's see how the for loop actually works. So, the for loop, it's going to have... Uh, its own scope basically when you declare i as zero i zero is going to be there so this is the memory of the program this is for the scope of the four i is zero so this is this is declared inside the scope so the program actually doesn't know i outside of four so i it, this is done the very first time you go through a loop so this is done the very first time you go through the loop you say print i i is printed as zero and then this line the increment is actually done at the very very end so this is done at the very last line of the for loop so you would print i and then i is increased by 1. So i will become 1. And then we go back to the top. We don't initialize anymore. So we just say i is 1 is, is 1 less than 3. It is. So we're going to go back print i as 1. And then we increment because we are at the end. So let me actually erase. So i actually becomes 2 we go back to the top again we, we are ignoring the initialization um i is less than 3 it, it is so we're going to go print it so it's going to become 2 is going to be printed and then we are at the end so i plus plus happens again 3 we go back up and i 3 is not less than 3 so then we are done right we are done uh, the scope of four is 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 done, and you're 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 going to end up with zero, one, and two. So now, outside of the for loop, if I try to say print out i, so if I said print i, this is actually a compilation error because i technically is declared within the scope of four. Of course, the scope of 4 is right over here, right? So let's uh, recap what we learned of the for loop. And this is basically it. That's all you need to know. Um, let's say we have 4 int i 0, i less than 3, i plus plus. And here we have print ln i. So let's uh, recap. First of all, this is number one initialization. This is number two test condition. And this is number three, um, basically updating condition. So this is up. What did I even write? Sorry. This is up. Uh, I do apologize. So this is updating this is the updating expression so um the notes on this is number one happens the very first time you go through 
the loop. So initialization happens only the very first time you go through the loop. Um, number two, you test condition each time. So even the very first time you test the condition. And number three, updating happens as the last line of the loop. So really, this I++ thing, it actually happens at the very bottom. So no, no matter how many lines you have in your for loop, the updating condition happens at the very, very end. So let's look at the slides uh, on this. And... Um, go through it so the for loop again it has three fields the initialization expression the test expression and the update the statements are in here so everything that the while loop has and it, it has a structure so for the while loop for example you do not have to have initialization um you do you you you, you could just say while true and that's a, that's a loop for you right but here no you need to have everything structured of course, it stops when the test expression returns to, to false. Notice there is no semicolon at the end of uh, the for loop. The flowchart of this is different. For, uh, it's, it's pretty much the same as the while loop, except that every single component is a must have in a, in a for loop. So you have the initialization the test condition and the update as of dub them one, two, and three, you see them on top and the statements are here. As long as the test condition is true, you execute the statements, you update and you test again and you keep going. This is, this is basically, this is basically our loop. As soon as the test expression is false, you're going to go back up and execute the next statements. So the test expression here is actually, uh, this is what is a logical expression. All right. Um, so in a setup function, if we have um, void int, void setup, so we have int, so, We have i, and i is garbage. Then we're going to do initialization inside. So initialization expression, you have your text expression, test expression, and you have your updating expression. And output is also going to be 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Let me ask you something. What happens now if I said print ln i can i can i use i here yes i can because i has been declared outside of the for loop if on the other hand uh, like the way i had it in my notes if on the other hand i declared i inside the for loop then i cannot in this case I cannot have this. Um, I I only um, sorry I only lives inside the scope of the for loop because it is declared in the scope of the for loop, 
right? So because it is declared in the scope of the for loop, it only lives in the for loop. As soon as the, the scope of the loop is, is done, i also dies. The good thing about the for loop is that it only initializes i at the very first iteration so that you don't reset i. See, so, so there's, there's, there's a big difference here uh, it, it, from, from, let's say, the draw function or the while loop. It, it, it doesn't keep resetting it. But in this case, i is actually declared outside of the for loop. Therefore, it doesn't die when for loop is done. It actually persists beyond because the scope of i is actually the entire setup function. So hopefully that is uh, clear for for everybody. Um, I have a slide explaining the the scope uh, a little bit here as well. So so read read through this, but it's basically everything that I uh, that I just uh, explained. Uh, just to make sure that everybody is absolutely clear on this scope thing, I want to make a quick comparison with uh, with uh, the while loop. So for the while loop, if I have while int i is 0, and let's say i is less than 5, if I say int j equals 0 in my while loop, right? And let's say I would say j i plus plus, and then j plus plus. And actually, let's make this into three to make things to make things simpler. So this the the memory diagram of this would actually be i is zero. Is i less than three? It is. Actually, you know what? Let's let's add one more line to the code as well. Let's just say print ln i and j. So let's say this is my council. So i is zero. Then we come into the scope of while. When you come to the scope of while, this is basically is created okay so we say int j zero so j is created inside of while we say i plus plus j plus plus so i will become one j will become one and then we say print i and j so i is one j is one that's going to be printed and we go back to the top is i less than 3? It is less than 3. So we come back down in the scope of j and we say int j equals 0. So j is actually recreated and the value of j becomes, becomes 0 again. Then we have i plus plus. So i becomes 1. Sorry, i becomes 2 this time. Okay, and we have j plus plus, j becomes 1. So, um, 2 is printed for i, and j, again, 1 is printed. So, we go back to the top, i is actually... 2, so 2 is less than 3, we come back down, j again is completely erased, oops, sorry, I froze, froze for a second, so j is erased and set to 0 again, then i++, plus plus, i becomes 3, j plus plus j becomes 1 we print again we print 3 and 1 we go back to the top i is less than 3 and so is i less than 3 no it's not so we're going to come out out in here outside of the while loop 
we're going to have we, we still have an i because i has a scope for the entire program but we don't have a j because j the scope of j is only inside the while loop right so basically the scope of a variable is from where they're declared to the to the end of the program or to the end of um to, to the next uh, brace basically to the next closing brace this is uh, an indication that having that, that declaring a variable inside a while loop is a waste of time because it gets reset every time you go back up so it's pretty much the same deal with withdraw but in a for loop the for loop is the same so if you if you declare a variable inside the for loop that is also this the same thing but it's just that if you declare it inside the brackets then that actually works. I'll show you what I mean. So if you have for int i equals 0, i less than 3, i plus plus, and then if you have int j equals 0, And let's say, let's just say print ln i and j. And then we say j plus plus. You sort of see this is sort of, sort of the same thing, right? Because when we come into here, we basically get the scope of 4 i is created 0 j is created 0 we print both of them so we get 0 and 0 printed out j plus plus j will become 1 and this line is actually being executed at the very end here so actually i plus plus i happens here as well so we have both j and i as one when we go back to the top we don't do the initialization anymore so we start from here we, we check i is less than three it is um, so we come back down now we're going to execute this line so j is actually going to be destroyed and created again as zero so here we're going to print i as one and j is actually zero again right then we're going to do plus plus so j is going to become one and i is going to become become two right so then at this point we go back up we don't do the initialization of i anymore we say is i less than three and it is so we go back j is created again because it is redeclared so j again becomes zero we print them both we print two and zero and then we have j plus plus so j becomes one and i plus plus happens at the very end so i will become three we go back to the top i is less than three no it's not so we get out of the loop and we come out here at the end of the loop in here if i said print i and j is that correct no because the program doesn't know i it doesn't know j they're, they're both only in the scope of the for loop so hopefully you understand um the the scope uh of uh and how things work with uh, with uh, with the scope of uh, these uh, these loops it should be pretty clear uh, let's have a question and uh, we'll come back with uh, more material thank you